to another Tech Minds video. So a question that I get asked quite a lot is how can we increase the power output from our SDR transmitter? Now, not all SDR receivers have the ability to transmit as well as receive, but three of the most common SDRs with transmit capabilities are the Lime SDR Mini, the Hack RF1, and the add-on Pluto. Now, if you've played around with the transmitting side of these SDRs, then you'll know that they do not output much RF power, maybe a few milliwatts, depending on the band. So if you want to extend the transmit range of one of these, it's not as hard as you might think, and it doesn't have to cost a fortune either. So what you also have to understand is that these transmit capable SCR receivers cover such a wide bandwidth, you'll most likely see a variation in power levels as you change its transmit frequency. For example, the Lime SDR Mini has been measured to output 15 milliwatts at 437 MHz, whereas if we set the Lime SDR Mini to transmit on, say, 2.4 GHz, the output power would be as low as 1 to 2 milliwatts. The Hack RF1 is also rated to output at least 1 milliwatt up to 30 milliwatts depending on the band. The Adam Pluto outputs around 1.5 milliwatts at 2.4 GHz. Now all of these power levels are pretty much estimates and will also change due to the cables being used, the power meter calibration and even the power supply to the transmit capable SDR. RF amplifiers work in such a way that you input a small signal and then the output side of the amplifier has that same signal amplified with more power. Now big power amplifiers like those that we see at ham radio stations would have some form of tuning and specifications for certain bands. That means we couldn't use an amplifier that's designed, say, for 50 MHz only with a transmitter that only transmits on 144 MHz. But what if we just want a small amount of gain from an amplifier that could cover a large frequency range? Well, you would most likely want to look at something like the widely used SPF 5189Z. These have a great frequency range of between 50 MHz right up to 4 GHz. The specifications for these rate its gain at around 12.8 dB, but it's highly unlikely you'll get 12.8 dB gain across all of the bandwidth. But you will get some sort of gain. Now the good thing about the SPF 5189Z is that they are extremely cheap. We're talking less than $10. The other good thing is that if your input signal is extremely low, then you could potentially cascade two of these together in line to provide a higher final output. Now, when I was testing various options for my QO100 uplink transmitter for 2.4 gigs, I used the Lime SDR Mini as a transmitter, and then I had two of these SPF5189Zs as a pre-amplifier to my final amplifier. Now, it's also worth pointing out that the drawback of using very broadband amplifiers is that they will also amplify RF harmonics coming from your transmitter. To get around this, you should use an RF bandpass filter for the frequency that you're transmitting on. The middle amplifier there, the analog devices CN0417, is a device specifically designed for use between 2.4 and 2.5 gigahertz. With a 20 dB gain and a maximum input of 100 milliwatts, we could potentially see around one watt RF output from this device. Now the CN0417 has a built-in filter for between 2.4 and 2.5 gigahertz, so it would be no use outside of these frequencies. In fact, I use one of these in my QA100 preamp circuit. The CN0417 is a professional piece of equipment and works extremely well. However, it does have a price tag of around 50 euros, depending on where you purchase it from. You don't really want to use a CON417 if you're going to be targeting 2.4 to 2.5 gigahertz. The amplifier there on the right, the RF2126, is another broadband amplifier, ranging from 400 megahertz up to 2.7 gigahertz, with a rated 12 dB gain at 2.4 gigs. Now notice how the 12 dB gain has been specified only for 2.4 gigs. This is because the gain will be a lot less on other frequencies, but it will still work. Now I'm going to show you the effect of using one of these amplifiers in line. I'm going to be using my Hack RF mounted in a porter pack as the transmitter, and we have an immersion RC power meter to measure the results. But because the power meter has a maximum input of one watt, and I want to protect it from overpower, I'm also going to use a 10 dB attenuator in line. We can set this offset within the power meter so it displays the correct power reading to us, so we don't have to work it out. 
So first off, I'm going to set the HackRF to transmit an FM carrier on 2.4 GHz. And then we're going to measure the power output directly with no amplifier in line. Now by pressing the right button on the porter pack, it starts to transmit. And you can see this by the screen going black on the porter pack. This means it's in transmit mode. Now if we take a closer look at the power meter, we can see that we're measuring an output power of around 3.8 milliwatts. It's fluctuating slightly there. So let's do the same test, but with the analog devices CN0417 in line and powered up. So here we have the CN0417 connected in line and the CN0417 is easily powered from a USB hub and that's what the black cable there is. So if we turn the port pack to transmit mode, we should see a massive jump in power output. And there we go. As you can see, we are now around 430 milliwatts. Quite impressive if you ask me. So let's go ahead and take a look at how well the SPF 5189Z works. So the SPF 5189Z actually comes metal canned and with SMA connectors on both ends. Now mine looks like this because I've been performing quite a lot of experiments with it and I've removed one of the SMA connectors and the can. So we know that the HackRF was outputting around 3.8 milliwatts at 2.4 gigs without any amplification. So let's see how well the SPF amplifier works. And there we go. We have around 13.2 milliwatts at 2.4 gigahertz. Now as the SPF is a wideband amplifier, let's also take a look at how well it performs on 433 megahertz. So with the HackRF1 changed to 433.5 megahertz and the SPF in line, we're seeing around 6.6 .6 milliwatts. If we then take the SPF out of line and check the power output of the HackRF at 433 megahertz, we can see that it's not even one milliwatt. In fact, it's minus 4.35 dBm. Now I don't own one of the amps that I showed you earlier, but I hope this demonstration shows you how these broadband amplifiers work in comparison to a dedicated frequency amplifier. For those wondering, the SPF amplifier only requires five volts to operate. I actually run mine from a 12 volt supply, but it goes through a step down converter to provide me the five volts that I need to power the SPF amplifier. I'll leave a link down in the description below of where you can purchase these if you want to. And if you've got any questions about this or you've used this or uh, another type of uh, amplifier with your SDR transmitter, then please feel free, leave a comment below and we'll be interested to hear your experience. Until the next video, guys, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.